Hi, my name is Jerry Hargrove. I'm the LightSail Developer Advocate, and I'm here today to talk about highly available WordPress on Amazon LightSail. So today I'm gonna to cover three main topics. First, I'm gonna provide a, a real brief introduction to LightSail, and then I'll talk again briefly just about high availability in general. Both of these I wanna do just to make sure we're on the same page and we're all talking about the same thing. And then I'll talk specifically about how to make your WordPress instance on LightSail more highly available. My goal is that at the end of this webinar, you'll have the information that you need to achieve high availability on LightSail yourself. So let's get started. Um, LightSail is a virtual private server or VPS. It's really the easiest way to get started on AWS for developers, small businesses, students, or other users who need a solution to build and host their applications on the cloud. So LightSail provides you with the compute, storage, networking capacity, and it provides you with the capability to manage your websites and your web applications in the cloud. LightSail is ideal for simpler workloads, quick deployments, and getting started on AWS. It's really designed to help you start small and then scale as you grow. LightSail makes your projects easier by automatically configuring networking access, security environment, and takes a lot of the guesswork out of launching servers in the cloud. And as your ideas grow, you can add things like a LightSail load balancer or a CDN to accommodate increased traffic and heavier workloads. Plus, you can still use the full force of AWS by connecting your LightSail project to other AWS services. LightSail provides very, very predictable pricing. We refer to these as bundles or LightSail plans, and they include a virtual server with a fixed amount of memory, like RAM and compute or vCPUs and provide SSD storage and, and free data transfer allowances. And you can see the different bundles on your screen now, starting on the left-hand side with our least expensive bundle um, with 512 megabytes of RAM and a single CPU and move up to more powerful and um, more powerful instances as you move to the right. And LightSail plans always include uh, static IP addresses with them, includes DNS management, resource monitoring and alerting, and remote access via SSH or RDP. LightSail also offers a number of pre-configured one-click to launch applications and stacks. So you can launch simple operating systems um, to suit your needs. You could launch something with Amazon Linux or Windows Server or Ubuntu or CentOS or more. You can use these vanilla operating systems and then install or configure your own applications and software to your own specification. Or you can pick a blueprint with prepackaged applications like WordPress um, or Drupal or Magento, whatever you might need for your particular purposes. Amazon LightSail is, is more than just a VPS though. As your LightSail needs grow, LightSail provides a host of additional features to help your LightSail experience grow with you, including databases, uh, content delivery networks, load balancers, as I mentioned before, DNS management, and containers as well. And I'll talk about a couple of these in the next few minutes as they relate to high availability. So Amazon LightSail provides you with these features to make it easy for you to get started, but that doesn't mean you're limited to those options. You can integrate your LightSail project with some of the 90 plus other services on AWS through Amazon VPC peering. So you can manage the services in AWS using the AWS Management Console while still keeping your day-to-day -day management of LightSail resources in the LightSail Console. It's really the best of both worlds. In addition, LightSail provides a clear upgrade path to EC2 as your cloud ideas expand and you need to grow your website or application. And it's actually rather simple. You take a snapshot of your LightSail instance, you 
export your snapshot to EC2. And then from EC2, you can use the upgrade to EC2 wizard to get your new EC2 instance up and running. It's pretty straightforward. With LightSail, it's easy to deploy web applications, as I mentioned, with just a few clicks. You can get pre-configured stacks like uh, LAMP and Mean and Node.js, making it really easy to get your web applications online. Um, LightSail allows you to create websites that, that really shine. You can create and customize your blog, your e-commerce site, or your personal website with uh, pre-configured applications like WordPress and Magento and Joomla. And you can also use LightSail to run uh, your commercial software or open source software for your business, like line of business software, file storage and sharing, backup software or financial and accounting software and, and others. Um, one of my favorite use cases for LightSail right now is using it for dev and test environments. I can spin up a LightSail instance in just a matter of minutes create dev sandboxes and test environments outside of my production environment that lets me test without having to worry about breaking something in production. And then once I'm done, I can quickly shut these instances down and you pay only for them while you're using them. So that's it for a really quick, brief introduction to LightSail, really quick and to the point. So let's talk briefly then about high availability. And again, I want to go over just a couple of terms so we're all on the same page when I really start digging into this. Now, let's start with a definition. When I speak of high availability, or you'll hear me say HA for short, I'm really talking about maximizing the uptime of WordPress or the amount of time that users or customers can access WordPress or really conversely minimizing downtime. But that is still somewhat subjective. Your idea of what high availability is and your definition of what high means might be different than mine or might be different from that of your neighbors. So let's look at some language that we can use to measure availability that we're all familiar with likely, and that is, uh, nines of availability. People typically talk in terms of nines of availability when they're speaking about high availability. This expresses that system uptime or availability as a percentage of total system time. And you've probably already heard of these before. For example, two nines of availability, if you look in the bottom left corner of this chart, or 99% uptime, means over the course of the year, you could have up to 87.6 hours of downtime. Or if you look at it on a daily basis, that's really 14.4 minutes per day. And moving up, uh, looking at just nines, so three nines of availability is 8.76 hours down per year. Uh, four nines is just short of an hour of downtime a year. And five nines, is about five minutes of downtime a year or you know, less than a minute. Ultimately, what your end users and customers care about is not necessarily the number of nines you have, but whether your site is available when they want or they need to use it. And at the same time though, nines are, are an easy shorthand way to talk about how reliable uh, your system is. One thing to keep in mind is when you're thinking about the number of nines of availability for your WordPress site, more nines generally means more money. So what level of availability do you need for your particular site? Where you fall on the spectrum of, of nines is really determined by your particular use case and your unique needs. If you're running, for example, a, a WordPress instance, and it's really a personal or family blog, for example, you probably don't need five nines of availability. You might be okay with two nines of availability. If you're running a small business storefront, you might need a little bit more. You might wanna make sure that your LightSail WordPress instance is up and running for, with three nines of availability. And the same goes for other types of systems, whether they're business critical systems, health and safety systems, or global enterprise systems. 
those will determine the level of high availability that you actually need. For some of these, five nines of availability is a requirement. Regardless of where you land, remember that achieving high availability for your WordPress application is probably not going to be a one-time event. It's going to be an evolution and it's going to be a journey. Your HA needs a year from now may differ from what your HA needs are today. And the number of nines that you need today might not be the same as the number of nines you need tomorrow. So it's a journey that you'll start on and will complete over time. Um, I want to cover a couple of terms to familiarize everybody with. The, the first is single point of failure. What does that mean? Um, quite simply, a single point of failure is a part of your system, in this case WordPress, that if it were to fail, would stop the entire system from working. And we, we focus a lot on single points of failure when we're talking about high availability because we want to reduce those. For example, if your WordPress instance relies on a single instance of a database, then it's considered a single point of failure. If that database fails, your system is likely going to be unusable. And so single point of failures are, are undesirable. And we'll focus on reducing some of those single point of failures in WordPress stacks as I continue further. Uh, a couple of other terms that I want to familiarize yourself with are recovery point objective or RPO and recovery time objective. Now, really these are just indications of uh, how long your system will be down in the case of RTO, and RPO really indicates how much data you might lose as part of that outage. I'm going to focus a lot on downtime today, which really is RTO, but I'll also call out points where RPO is affected by some of the changes that we made. And as a matter of fact, I'll use a, a more concise version of this diagram to keep track of our progress as we um, work on making a WordPress instance on LightSail more highly available. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So let's set the stage for this and for the discussion going forward. And let's start with a simple LightSail instance that's running WordPress. So when you launch a LightSail instance, and you use the WordPress blueprint, you get a LightSail instance. And as I mentioned before, you also get with that LightSail instance, you get storage, you get DNS management and if needed, and you get a public IP address. And so with that public IP address, you can reach your LightSail instance and can use it as the destination for DNS. So for example, I could point my www.awsgeek.com website to the public IP address of my WordPress instance. And then each time a user visits my WordPress site um, at www.awsgeek.com, they're directed by DNS to that IP address. So this works great. And, and, and may last for a very long time, but what happens um, if something happens to my LightSail instance or I need to restart my LightSail instance. When a new LightSail instance is started, even the one that was recently stopped, it gets a new public IP address. Now, this your LightSail instance might be stopped and started because of an actual outage or it might be something as innocuous as having to start and, and restart it to update software or, or change bundles, for example. So let's look at some of the steps that it would take after setting up my initial LightSail WordPress instance to get it back up and, and running again. So, so assuming we started with that bare bones LightSail instance and pointed DNS at it, here's what you'd likely need to do. And obviously your mileage go, is going to vary a bit here, but it looks a lot like this and, and looks a lot like the first time you launched it. First, you're going to relaunch that LightSail instance, again, picking the region and the capacity in the blueprint, for example. 
And then next, you're going to reconfigure your WordPress instance. You're going to install a theme, your plugins, and then upload your content. Again, a lot of this depends on your particular use case and how you're using WordPress, whether it's manual or automatic, or you might be using a WordPress plugin to do restoration of the content. And then finally, you're going to need to update DNS. And I put a question mark here because this might not be entirely obvious, but when you do restart that instance, it requires a IP address change. So the public IP address of your instance change, and that means that you need to point DNS at it. So how long does it take for DNS to change? Well, I've put some rough ideas for, for numbers up here, but um, I think you get the gist of this is that in terms of the amount of time it's going to take to bring a new LightSail instance up to replace an old one, it, it's on the order, it could be on the order of a day. For example, it's gonna take you know, 10 minutes to launch a new LightSail instance. Maybe it takes a few hours for you to restore your WordPress content. And then it might take a few hours to a day or two to update DNS. And while that update is happening, your users may be directed to your old IP address. And so for their perspective, your website is down. So looking back at our um, chart of recovery objectives, then we can say based on this information and, and looking at our road to high availability that our RTO, the time to our recovery time objective is going to be on the order of days. And so we're gonna start with that. And we're gonna start thinking about high availability, high availability from that perspective. How do we start reducing the amount of time that it's going to take to recover? So I'm gonna start on the right-hand side and say, how do we fix this problem with updating DNS? How can we reduce that time from maybe a day down to a very short amount of time? Well, we can do that by using a LightSail static IP address. And what a LightSail static IP address does is it replaces the default public IP address of your instance. And it's free. So you can use static IP addresses, you can allocate static IP addresses on LightSail for free, as long as you're using them. If you allocate static IP addresses and don't use them, there's a small charge for it. But it's effectively free as long as you're using them. And that allows you to assign and reassign a static public IP address to your instances. So in our case, imagine our first instance fails, we have our public static public IP address pointing at that instance, if it fails and we bring another one up in its place, we simply have to reassign that public IP address to that new LightSail instance. DNS still points to that public IP address associated with that static IP. And so we solve this problem of having to wait for DNS propagation by providing DNS with a IP address that is not going to change over the lifetime of our WordPress installation. So if we go back to our scorecard here and we look at our RTO, we see that you know before using a static IP address, it was in the on the order of potentially days to fix. We add our static IP address from LightSail to it, and now we've reduced our RTO down to potentially hours. Really, that's composed of just restarting your LightSail instance and then restoring WordPress uh, uh, content. So just by using a static IP address, we've solved a big chunk of this problem and it's free. There was really no cost to it. So, okay, now let's turn our attention to the second task on the list or the middle one here, and that is restoring WordPress content. Remember when I, I set the stage, I, I really set this WordPress site up without a lot of, of forethought. I wasn't thinking about what I would do with it, when or if something happened. I just wanted to get it up very quickly. I was thinking about how to build it the first time, not really what I was going to do with it if it, if it failed. So what can I do to speed up restoration and recovery of 
a WordPress instance and its content. Well, for that, I'm going to turn to LightSail snapshots. So LightSail snapshots are automatic, incremental daily backups of your LightSail instances. You specify the time of day that you want this to happen, and LightSail will create up to seven automatic snapshots, you know, a week's worth of snapshots once a day. And it will do that incrementally. The first snapshot that it creates will be a full backup of your LightSail instance, and subsequent snapshots then will be incrementals or delta. And there's a monthly storage fee for the uh, snapshot data that's being stored. So what that means though, is that now, instead of having to rebuild my LightSail instance from scratch, I can simply restore it from one of these LightSail snapshots that I've created. So going back to our scorecard again on our road to high availability, after addition of the static IP address, we reduce the time to recovery down to hours. Now with the addition of snapshots, we can reduce that time to recovery down to minutes. That really is just how long does it take us to launch a new LightSail instance and replace and switch over the static IP address. The second thing that snapshots do are allow us to really define what RPO is. And as I mentioned before, RPO is, is recovery point objective. And that, that really defines, in the case of an outage, an unplanned outage specifically, how much data might we, lo might we lose? So if we're using daily snapshots provided by LightSail, which occur every 24 hours, that means in the worst possible case, we might lose 24 hours worth of data. So if our LightSail snapshots are happening every day at midnight, and we have a user who creates a new blog post the next morning and uploads some images, and then that afternoon there is an outage, we're going to restore our LightSail WordPress instance to the previous automatic snapshot, which was before that blog post was created or those images uploaded. So we could potentially lose them. So, but that's great. We're, we're at a great point. And we've, we've reduced a lot of the time associated with recovering an instance. And you might be tempted to stop right here and call it good. And as a matter of fact, if you do nothing more today, then you know everybody listening should really implement at least these two steps that I've just described here, which is assigning static IP addresses to your instances and using automated snapshots. It's a real easy and inexpensive way to gain uh, much more high availability than you currently have. But for those of you who want to achieve even higher levels of availability, let's push on. So in the next step, we're really looking at the LightSail instance itself. And I, on the screen, you see I've said, well, we're launching a LightSail instance. It's going to take 10 minutes to do that. I'm really not going to focus on speeding that up. I'm going to sidestep that issue and say, instead of speeding that up, I want to solve that problem by having other instances available to take on that load. And as it turns out, as, as we start dealing more with these types of issues, um, the key to high availability often comes in the form of, of redundancy. And the more you have, the less likely you really are to notice if one goes missing, right? You can add more and more instances. And who's going to notice if one instance disappears, if something happens to one instance and it fails? So if other if one instance fails in this case, others can take up the slack and until it's replaced. But simply cloning WordPress servers, putting them behind a load balancer to achieve high availability really doesn't work. And to see why, let's take a brief tour of WordPress internals. So I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail. Many of you probably already know this and, and, and know more than this. But really, when we look at WordPress, I like to put it into a couple of different categories. Um, there's the, the web server, 
which might be Apache or Nginx. Um, there's the application itself written in PHP. And there's the operating system underneath it. Those change fairly infrequently. And so I place them sort of above that dotted line you see on, on the screen, the horizontal line. And below that, I've placed the, the database and the file system. So the database stores a big chunk of the data that the WordPress needs, for example, you know, user account information, blog posts. Um, but the file system also stores another portion of data. For example, new images that you upload to your WordPress uh, server, those are stored on the file system. And then th there's sort of a combination of, you know, if you're using themes and plugins, which many of you are, both the database and file system store that, that information. For, for example, the database holds information about what plugins are in use and which theme is currently active, but the file system is actually where those plugins, the code for the plugins and for the scene themes is, is actually stored. So um, going back to the, the previous comment I made about simply adding instances doesn't really achieve high levels of availability, let's demonstrate that and see what, what I really mean by that by following a typical typical interaction on WordPress. So suppose a user publishes a blog and, and uploads images, and we have a single WordPress instance. Those blog uh, entries and the images associated with that are stored on the database and the file system locally. Later on, if someone wants to read that blog or view those images, they go through the same WordPress instance, they're directed to the same database, and the information comes out of the same file system. But what happens if we add another WordPress instance to the mix and try to do the same thing? So at first, it may seem to work. We publish a blog, upload images. Uh, we have a load balancer in place, and that load balancer directs the user to one of our WordPress instances. Maybe that there's some uh, uh, instance affinity in the load balancer will always direct me to that particular instance. So I can publish a blog. I can upload images. They'll get saved to the database and the file system. And then I can go back in and I can read that blog and view those images and it will go down the same path and everything looks great. But what happens if instance A is busy and the load balancer routes me or some other user to instance B? That blog post and those images aren't there because each WordPress instance is configured to use its own local database and local file system. So I, I think you see what I'm getting at is that this initially isn't strictly a, a high availability problem, but rather a, a shared resource problem. But we really need to solve this shared resource problem before we can achieve higher availability for our system. So we need to come up with a solution that allows us to share um, the database and the file system across multiple uh, WordPress instances. So going back to our you know, simple WordPress internals chart here, um, let's start by thinking about how we're going to move the database so we can share it between WordPress instances, sort of like this. I want to take the database and I want to make it external so that multiple instances can access that database to get information about blog posts and users and we don't have to synchronize it between two instances. So to solve that, we can use LightSail databases. So LightSail databases are fully managed, highly available MySQL or Postgres uh, databases that are, as I mentioned, completely managed for you. They include automatic failover. So if a WordPress instance is connecting to the database, and there is some problem with the primary, um, LightSail databases will automatically redirect uh, over to the secondary. And also provided with that are automated backups. So with a LightSail database, you also get seven day point, uh, five minute point in time recovery. So what this really means is that you can recover your database instance to any point at a five minute granularity over the last week. So 
what does this do for us in terms of our road to high availability? If we add a light sale database to our, our existing uh, uh, infrastructure, initially it doesn't reduce the RTO, the, the time to recovery. But what it does do is help us with RPO. In this case, as I mentioned, we can now recover our database to within five minutes. So instead of having to go back 24 hours, we may be able to go back uh, a much shorter time. And, and I say that because there, there are some complications that we have to account for in this case. And now that we have to synchronize, we need to determine where to go on the file system as well as the database. But it does help us move in that direction and it's part of the solution that will help us achieve this shared resource that we can use between multiple light cell instances so going back to our, our internals so now that we've shared the database we're using light cell databases for that let's look at the file system so i'm gonna i, I i'm going to i'm not going to cheat but i'm going to say i'm going to further break the file system up into a, a, another um, I'm going to separate it differently, and I'm going to say I really want to deal with uploads and media that users are, are uh, uploading as part of blog posts or their e-commerce site. Themes and plugins, they tend to change less frequently, so I'm going to go ahead and leave those with the, the, the rest of the system and talk specifically about media uploads and how we can... Um, how we can share those across instances. There are other techniques to deal with updates to themes and plugins that I won't talk about right now, but I'll focus entirely on, on media. So how do we solve that? Well, it's a two-part uh, solution. First is instead of uh, storing media files locally on the local file system, we use Amazon S3 instead. So Amazon S3 is... AWS's cloud object storage, again, fully managed, highly available. You see there are four nines of availability and, and highly durable, 11 nines of durability. The likelihood of you actually losing a file on S3 is, is very, very low. So you use Amazon S3 in combination with a plugin. So plugins um, like the ones I've listed here, W3 Total Cache, WP Offload Media Lite, um, uh, W3 Total Cache is a much more comprehensive plugin. WP Offload Media Lite is very specific to this use case, but, but really what we're looking at them to do for us is to automatically copy images or videos or documents or other media added through the WordPress media uploader up to S3 and then automatically replace the URL for each of those media files with the S3 URL, so that anytime a user requests um, a, a page that includes one of those media files, it will point to S3 instead of the WordPress instance. And the same also works for image thumbnails, which are then copied to the bucket. And as I mentioned, um, there, are, there are other plugins that do the same thing. And some provide a very simple mechanism to do this. Others provide a much more comprehensive performance and caching suite. So if we look back at our WordPress internals now, um, we see, okay, we've, we've moved the database out, we've moved uploads out, and we now have a system that is looking much more like um, like this system here. So we've got a shared database and we've got a shared file system. Really all we need now is the ability to um, run multiple WordPress light cell instances behind a load balancer. And as you might guess, the next thing I'm gonna suggest that we use is a light cell load balancer. So uh, a light cell load balancer is a fully managed, um, load balancer that, that allows you to very easily attach and detach light sale instances and, and provides uh, automatic health checks. So the load balancer, if it detects that one of your light sale WordPress instances is not responding, it will remove it from rotation. 
continue monitoring it, but we'll route traffic and requests to other instances that are associated with that uh, light cell load balancer. So it won't bring that the unhealthy instance back into rotation until it determines that it's healthy again. So you can imagine using a light cell load balancer to scale your system up. For example, you have a a Black Friday type event where you know you're going to need additional capacity. You could adapt, add additional light cell instances to your load balancer, leave them in place to handle the additional traffic over the course of the event. And then once the event is done, remove those instances from the load balancer and go back to your, to your normal state. So with the addition of the light cell load balancer, now we can start looking at what a complete solution looks like here um, on the left-hand side. So our, on our road to high availability, we've added a static IP address. We've added snapshots. We got a lot of mileage out of that. Uh, for the final step, we're, we've added a light cell database. Um, we've included Amazon S3 for media storage in concert with an external WordPress plugin. And then we've added a light sail load balancer to the mix. Now we can start to see that this affects RTO. Any one of these individually would not really affect the overall high availability of your system, but in concert, they reduce your RTO, the time to recovery down uh, to a very minimal value, really, if you look at this uh, from a high availability perspective, you've got multiple light sail instances running. If one of those fails, there are others to pick up, um, pick up the slack. If the database uh, primary fails, the secondary can jump in. So we've achieved a, a much higher level of availability and significantly reduced our RTO. So with that, I wanna review um, where we've been on our road to high availability. So if we go back all the way to the beginning of, of this conversation, we, we really had a system, a WordPress system running on LightSail where the time to recovery in the event of a failure could run in the order of days. The first step we took was we added a LightSail static IP address and that helped us with uh, DNS delays with a static IP address. We no longer had to worry about or wait for DNS changes to propagate to point at new light cell instances. We could simply reassociate a light cell static IP address at a, a new light cell instance and not have to worry about DNS propagation. So we reduced our RTO or the time to recovery from days down to hours, however long it, it took to recover that light sale instance. The next step was to deal directly with recovery of that light sale instance through the use of light sale snapshots. So with light sale snapshots, we can quickly reconstitute a server without having to rebuild it from scratch. That had the effect again of reducing the time to to recovery our RTO from hours now down to minutes. And for many of you, this may be where you stop on your road to high availability today. This provides you, again, I mentioned with a lot of mileage and you get a lot of benefit out of this with very little overhead or cost. You're adding a static IP address and you're enabling snapshots and you get a lot out of that. As I mentioned, for those who wanted to pursue this further and achieve higher levels of availability and reduce amount of downtime even significantly further, we want to start with um, a light cell database. So when we added a light cell database, that further reduced our RPO because of the ability to do point in time recoveries of the database. It didn't immediately uh, affect our RTO or recovery time because we needed to add a couple more components like Amazon S3 and a plugin to allow for shared uh, file system, shared media content. And then finally, we added a light cell load balancer to the mix to allow us to effectively clone light cell instances who were then using shared database and shared content to reduce our 
RTO or reduce the time to recovery even further. So there, there are roughly five steps here. I think all of them are very achievable. And I wanted to mention, though, that I'm talking specifically about WordPress today, but these are fairly uh, uh, generic, fairly common uh, best practices that you can use on your WordPress instance, or maybe you have a simple LAMP stack. You can use very similar techniques to that. So with that, um, well, before I, before I finish up, I want to say there's actually more that I didn't have uh, enough time to talk about all of these other interesting topics related to high availability. Um, I didn't get to, a chance to talk about how you might use the LightSail CDN to achieve higher levels of availability for your WordPress instance and, and increase the reliability of your instance. I didn't talk about using Amazon Elastic File System as a shared file system. That's another option for um, or in replace of the uh, using the S3 bucket and the, a plugin. You can actually implement a, a real shared file system under multiple WordPress instances using EFS. I mentioned briefly that in the case of updating themes or plugins, that there was a different technique uh, to use, and I. I include this under instance administration. There are some different techniques that you have to use if you want to um, add plugins to your WordPress installation using the techniques that I described before. Um, you'd have to rebuild the uh, light cell image that you're going to use for WordPress. Another thing that um, I didn't get a chance to dive too deeply into was right sizing your instance. Um, it, depending on the uh, amount of high availability that you actually need and the capacity that you need, you might not simply need, you might not simply double the capacity of your instances when you add more. You may want to uh, pare that back a little bit. And there's a discussion around right sizing instances that I think that I think is really in interesting. And then finally, I uh, I mentioned the ability to migrate to EC2. Um, it's another topic in and of itself to really discuss when to graduate to EC2. When, when should you consider uh, moving from light sale to EC2? And what are some of the indicators that you might, uh, that you might want to look at to determine when to start thinking about that? So a whole suite of other topics that we can continue down and talk about with respect to high availability on a light sale and, and some of it specific to WordPress. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your time. I have really enjoyed uh, giving this webinar and I want to now uh, uh, take your questions and see what kind of questions you have for me. Thanks.